Okay, welcome back to the Unity 2D platform gaming tutorial from James, that's me, in Unity, this is part 9, I recommend watching the first 8 parts. In today's tutorial we're going to talk about boundaries and game limits, so let's go ahead and get started. Right now, we have our game set up with our camera, the rotation is locked, and we can follow our player, and we have moving platforms along with a gap and a moving platform to get over that gap we use the first person controller so that we can stay on platforms and run our little game here so when I talk about game limits what I mean is that when the game starts and you want your player to go right he's gonna go right that's fine what happens if your player decides that it's a good idea to go left there's nothing here to stop him from just falling off of the world. And the same with the giant hole on the right hand side of the game with the platform over it. If I jump off this hole here, I just fall off into space and keep falling infinitely. There's nothing there to stop me. Okay, so we need to put up some walls. Now in the past I've made the um, I guess metaphor or analogy of the game being built like a sandwich. So I guess you could say right now we're going to build the crust, the part that keeps the bread where it should be. It keeps all the pieces in there, okay, inside the game. If you don't want it going a certain direction, put up a, a barrier, and that's what we're going to make today. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a game object. Let me center my screen here on the main camera. Actually, let's make it on the player. Zoom out. <coughs> and we're going to do a game object to create other cube simple object now we're going to scale the cube vertically on the Y you can either drag up these little handles or you can just set it vertically in the Y right here to let's just say 40 now you'll notice if I go to the side view here that's a pretty skinny barrier right so to make sure that everything stays inside where it should be, enemies and otherwise, we're going to go ahead and scale that on the Z as well to probably say 20. All right, and then what we're going to do, because we don't want it to be seen by the camera, which right now it can't be because it's, uh, there it is, it's just too far out. We don't want it to be seen by the camera. What we're going to do is just turn off the mesh renderer. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead into our frontal view here and just drag it over to the right and set it. And so now that is a barrier that our player cannot walk through. He will run into it and cannot leave. So we're going to rename this cube to barrier. Okay. So our barrier object which I just had and just renamed and it did not stick. Okay, there we go. We get to press enter after you're done with the name. So we've got our barrier here and if we play our game, we move our player over. You can see in the scene view, he'll reach that point and he'll just stop. He can't go that far. Now we can see off the edge over here, so we can actually adjust our barrier so that the player can't see that far. And now he stops. Well, I guess he can still see the edge but um, we can move the floor around or put up a wall or something like that if we need to okay the other option we have with this cube um, is to readjust the size we can actually just set these back to one so it's a flat cube turn the mesh renderer back on if I zoom in on the cube here what we can do is actually apply a material we've already used such as the girder double zero okay or we can create a new one for the wall if we want to now what I'm gonna do so that they they can actually see the wall they don't just stop in the middle of nowhere for no reason they can actually see the wall what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees on the Z Now you can either use the rotate tool and do it by hand or for a more accurate you can come over here in the Z and just say negative 90. Okay. Now when we scale it up using the scale tool, you can see we're actually scaling it on the X. Okay. On the X axes. 
and I'm going to change the material to the floor girder and make this so it's a bit bigger. Okay, and then drag it over here to the right and now they can actually see that there's a wall there. So they'll understand why they've stopped. Oh, I forgot one, one last thing is that we have to make sure that it's it's thick on the Z, so we'll change that Z back up to 20 so that the player can't move past it. If you also want the player to recognize that this is going to stop them, you should have it overlap the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and move that forward until it blocks the floor there. And then when the player runs into it, they can see, oh, there's a barrier there. That's obviously a wall I can't get past, which makes sense because I can't jump through these girders, obviously I'm not going to be able to jump through that one. And so I can go on playing my game. Okay, so that's the first limitation. The next limit we're going to put in is the ceiling. Now this is basically the exact same. So we can actually control duplicate the uh, or control D on our barrier. Move it over here. And then what we can do is uh, just adjust it by rotating it back on the Z to zero. Okay? and then we're going to go ahead and move it up on the level so it looks like it's attached to our or our crane is attached to it just set that right there and there you go now you'll notice that this doesn't have a shadow and neither does the wall now the wall might not have a shadow because it appears that the light is coming down from the top so if you really want to be that exact with the lighting, what you can actually do is take this barrier, delete it, and just move or duplicate the floor and move it up. And now it has this shadow which overcasts onto the crane and everything looks realistic. Now we can move that over so that everything lines up. And let's readjust our floors so they line up with the walls and our other floor here. We can move over and the platform to cover the gap. Okay, and we can duplicate our ceiling again and drag it over until it just covers. So in Mario, in some of the dungeons, you can actually jump above the map. So what we can do is actually make it so the player can do that by adjusting the world and moving our vertical platform here over. So now when we play the game, you cannot run through this wall and let me just adjust this so you can actually see the ceiling uh, I'm gonna move this platform and duplicate it and put it over there let's see if we can jump up there now we can jump up oh it's a bit too high no uh, we're just doing some uh, some gameplay testing that's that's what this is <laughs> okay so now if we try it we can walk under it jump over it and oh that one's too tall too let's just move it down a little bit and then come over here to the game and jump up again and now you can see that there's a ceiling now instantly when players see things like this sense Mario they'll want to get above it that's it's if you if they've played Mario or any game you've already taught them that they can move vertically so in their mind that they're saying I can move right I can move up so their goals are going to be to move right or to move up. That's that's what's in their mind. Can I get above that? I can obviously stand on these girders. Can I stand on the other ones? And uh, and that's that's just going to be playing out in their mind endlessly. Is how do I get up there? Because if I can get up there, I can just run past the rest of the map, skip the bad guys, and uh, and anything to make life easier is is a pursuit. They're going to do it. So if we play our game, and I jump here, and I jump up here, and I jump up here, and, oh, I can't get up there. Oh, so I need to find a hole somewhere so I can get up there. So I'm going to fall down. Let's keep moving to the right. Oh, we got a platform here, and oh, I can't jump on that. So now I'm going to sit here and wait till the timing's right. Oh, and see if I can get up onto that platform. Almost had it. And this game is actually fun to me already. Thanks for watching.